everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and today we are going to dye some Hawthorne DK weight yarn. Hawthorne DK is the DK weight equivalent of the fingering weight yarn I dye a lot. This base is 80% superwash fine highland wool, 20% polyamide. It's two ply and is relatively high twist. One of the reasons why I picked this yarn to dye today is specifically because of the high twist. I want to try creating a variegated glazed yarn using three colors of Dharma acid dyes that I know glaze really well. Now it's possible I have a little too much of the dyes mixed, so if there's too much color then we won't really feel glazed. But we'll deal with that when we come to it and I'll talk more about the colors in a moment. I recently shared a project as part of the 2024 Summer Mini Skein Mini Series where I created a fade set that was all glazed by using these three different colors of dye that glaze super, super well. Dharma's Dark Navy, Royal Purple, and Pink Orchid. And I found that I can create mixtures of these colors to create a custom glazed color. And this pre-soak that I'm bringing on right now um, is actually some of the water that I used from that video. Uh, this started with 20 cups of water and almost two whole cups of white vinegar. And I don't know what volume exactly we have here left. I would say definitely over eight cups, but not 16. But we have things such that the the yarn is floating in here. It isn't compressed down at the bottom. Now the dye bath is warm, not hot. And I'm gonna go put on gloves and we'll bring over the dye. I have not yet turned on the heat, but things are still warm from before. Right here I have the royal purple dye. And goodness, I would say I have anywhere between 50 and 75 milliliters of this color, potentially too much to give us something that feels glazed. You can see that that's dark there, but maybe around the edges. Oof, I don't know. I'm moving it a bit. I think it's too dark. Uh, this is maybe what I get for not planning things out, but that's not a problem. We might have some elements of glazing throughout here, and here you can see some of those deeper pinks. <laughs> that you can get left behind from royal purple. Bring a little bit of this over. I wonder if that pink is the same pink as is in Pink Orchid. Uh, I did realize recently that I think it's possible with pink, uh, oh, with deep magenta to potentially glaze. But I think, I think these colors may have some feelings of glaze, but right now they're looking a little bit too saturated for me. But that's okay. If this didn't work, I have slightly less dark navy than I did royal purple. If this doesn't work the way I intended, uh, that's okay. We can try again another day. Yeah, because I think we have close, maybe not exactly, but we probably have close to a 1% depth of shade total across these three colors. And that's just way too much to high. With the pink orchid, I probably use around a, oh goodness, a 0.4% depth of shade for the glazing. But with the royal purple and dark navy, I use about a 0.25% depth of shade. So not very much color per amount of yarn. But either way, this is a fun colorway. We'll see if we have elements that feel glazed. I feel like we might see some glazing in these intermediate areas and maybe some of the area that's beneath the surface that we can't see right now. So it was an idea. I could have measured the dye and added less, but I like this color. <laughs> so we'll see where this goes. Uh, I've now turned on the heat. We're on two different burners on my stove top and I think I'm gonna heat this for about 30 minutes. But actually, I changed my mind. I'll come back in 15 and we'll see how much color is left and decide if we're gonna flip things. Because everything was warm already. It's only been 10 minutes and I was just checking. I'm not seeing any color left. 
I mean, we are quite high acid. Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm gonna bring over my tongs in a second so I can flip the yarn. But what I wanna do first is take these zip ties out of the water. There we go, so that way they can be cool enough that I can handle them with ease. <laughs> I also did reduce the heat. Now, I do see some glazing in those intermediate sections. Oh dear. And now we're gonna flip the yarn and see what we have on the other side. Okay, one of the skeins has some white. I am, is it just one? Yeah, maybe just the middle has some white. I'm very curious to see what the coverage of this is gonna look like. I actually, sometimes a lot of white would bother me. I actually don't mind it. Huh. I wanna see this through, and if I truly don't like it, I can always over dye it later. But the reason why I'm not concerned about the patch of white is because even if that seems concentrated in one section, it might actually get spread out in the finished colorway because of a different experiment I did where I dyed a skin of yarn wrong and I realized that there's more spread to where the yarns go. If, I'm not making any sense. But anyway, I'm going with it. I'm rolling with it. I want to see how this turns out and I don't want to stress because we might also have light glaze in there and it's going to be so pretty. Okay. I'm going to finish hitting this for the rest, the final 20 minutes, and then we'll I'll pop back in to remove the yarn. It's been 30 minutes, so I'm going to turn off the heat, and we'll remove our yarn. I used so much vinegar <laughs> for the other project. Part of it was by accident, um, but then I went to Costco today to get some more vinegar, and oh my gosh. We absolutely have some glazing in here. Ah, not all over, but we've got some. Although maybe we'll see more all over. Sometimes it's more obvious once yarn is dry. But anyway, I went to Costco and those huge gallon and a half jugs of vinegar that I've been using for years aren't available anymore. Oh, now they do have another vinegar option. It's just the containers are smaller. So I'm like, what am I gonna do with myself? But I have two of the big containers left. If I had known that they were out of stock, I probably would have saved one that just got recycled this week. But anyway. <laughs> uh, the new vinegar from Costco is still 5% acidity. Uh, and so it's the same strength. It's all just acetic acid. So it shouldn't be any issue. But it's the evening now. So I'm gonna let this cool overnight and tomorrow we'll wash it but oof, we've got some glaze in darker areas too i'm like dancing over here i'm so excited <laughs> see you tomorrow this yarn is super pretty let me know in the comments if i should try this again with calculating the amount of dye i would need to achieve the glazed effect on a region And honestly, I don't know if it would be easier to achieve the glazed look in a variegated way if I were to have just less dye total and dissolve it in more water to apply over an area, but I don't know if it would go all the way through still. So that's what I just don't know. High acid is key. So far we don't have very much bleeding. Very much. We don't have any bleeding. What am I saying? Okay, I'm going to add some dish soap. Now, I might be a little more careful if this yarn were non-superwash with using my sprayer on it, but honestly, that doesn't provide that much agitation. And since this yarn is superwash, it can handle a little bit more. If it was non-superwash, I would be more careful. Now, this is bringing me to another little question. Can you glaze a non-superwash yarn? And the answer is maybe. It's probably harder though, just like it's easier to get a glaze on a 
higher twist yarn with thicker plies, like a two-ply DK weight yarn, it's easier to get a glaze on than the fingering weight version, just because the plies are thicker, and so you get that glazed effect easier. On, su on superwash yarn, the dyes strike faster than they do on non-superwash yarn, and so therefore, if we had this equivalent yarn that was non-superwash, It might be a little more challenging, but still possible, especially with high acid. But that's also something that I haven't tried specifically. The wheels are turning in my brain right now. But anyway, we have no bleeding. Our yarn is washed. I'm going to put this through my spin dryer to spin out a lot of the excess water. And then I'll hang it up to finish drying. Here is the finished yarn. And no, it isn't all over glazed there are sections that have a lot of deep color. But then we have sections like in here that are absolutely glazed. I mean, let's just take a closer look at this section. See how the dye doesn't go all the way through the strand? Sometimes I like to show it by untwisting and showing some of that white core beneath. It is an airbrushed, light feeling. A feeling that we have also in navy and with some of our pink. Now we don't have a ton of consistency in these three skeins and that's okay. The middle skein has a little bit less of the purple overall, but what we did learn is I think that if I wanted to try this again, I need to add less dye and add the dye with a greater volume of water. Because if I add the dye too concentrated, it's gonna sort of strike where I've put it, but it has time and the motion to sort of push through the fibers a little bit more. And so this is just too much dye right here to get a glazed feel. If I had used less, then maybe we could have had something more like these sections where the colors came together a little bit more. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and whenever I film one video, I get ideas for like a dozen more. And one thing after this video and a few others I wanna try, I wanna try glazing with deep magenta. I don't know if that's the same pink pigment that is in Pink Orchid, but Pink Orchid isn't the most concentrated of colors and it seems to me like there could be other pinks that glaze as well. But I'd love for you to let me know any other colors that you find strike super, super fast, because those are the best candidates for glazing. A color that takes a long time and needs a lot of heat and acid to strike is not a good candidate for glazing, because if it needs a ton of time to strike to the yarn, it's gonna have time to penetrate those fibers a little further, and we're not gonna get that airbrushed, glazed feel. And of course you can glaze on top of other colors and use this as a wonderful layered effect. But when I'm testing things out, I like to do glazing over just a white yarn because that helps us get a feel of the type of effect we can get and then we can decide what we wanna do after that. But gosh, imagine doing these colors on top of a bright blue and how gorgeous that would be. Please subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss a new video. I post all the time, and I love to play around with different ways to add color to yarn. And if you love the yarn I dye, go and check out the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop for hand dyed yarn that has been featured in some of my videos. And this has made, and this makes the yarn that I sell incredibly unique because you don't have to wonder about how it was created, you can go watch exactly how it was created. You can find a link to the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop down in the video description. Thank you so much for watching.